Hi everyone. Now work on completing the square and the first part of the notes here is what is the form of a perfect square trinomial? Well, what you have is a binomial and if you square that, you get your perfect square trinomial. That's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, we could put a plus b times a plus b together and foil that out, but this is what we're going to get. So here is the form of a perfect square trinomial. All right, now, how do we complete the square when we have x squared plus 6x? So we have x squared plus 6x, and we need to add a certain amount to it. Well, the amount that we need to add has to do with this 6 here. And this 6 is, we got ax squared plus bx plus c. This 6 is the b coefficient. And what we do is we divide that by 2, okay, because we have two of them here, and then we raise that to the second power. Well, in this case, b is 6. So we take 6 divided by 2, and we raise that to the second power. That is 3 to the second power. So 9 will give us a perfect square trinomial. Okay? And we use that same rule. b over 2 squared. That coefficient divided by 2 and then raised to the second power. Well, for this one, we would take the 10, we would divide it by 2, and we would square it. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 to the second power is 25. So here, the C value would be 25. And I will leave those. Now, our goal is to take an equation and put it in vertex form. Now, this is for a quadratic equation. And if you were graphing a parabola, here is quadratic form. A times X minus H squared plus K. So, if I were going to use this example right here, we ask what the vertex is. The vertex is, on this, H. That's the x coordinate of the vertex, and k, that is the y coordinate of the vertex. <coughs> In this example, we are going to take, you got y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. All right, well, when I go to this, I'm going to take x squared plus 8x, and I'm going to complete the square. Put this in parentheses here. I'm going to put the 7 on the outside of the parentheses, but I'm adding a number to this. And when I add a number to it, I need to subtract that same number from it so that I don't change the problem. Well, the b value here is 8. We're going to take 8 divided by 2, and we're going to square that. This is the thing you got to remember with completing the square. And then we got 4 squared. So I'm adding 16 here, which means out here I'm going to subtract 16. And when I write this as a square of a binomial, this number right here, the 4, x plus 4 squared, that's what this is equal to. x plus 4 times x plus 4 will give me x squared plus 8x plus 16. We had to put the 16 there so it could work. And then outside, you got 7 minus 16, and that is negative 9. So our vertex on this problem, the x-coordinate, 
comes from here, and you change that sign, that's negative 4. Remember how positive slides left? That's negative 4 is where the x coordinate is, and negative 9, uh, the outside part, goes right down. So the vertex of this parabola is at negative 4, negative 9. All right, so, and we are going to get enough practice that we'll be able to remember that. And I'll save this for class. Now, completing the square can also be used as a method to solve quadratic equations. So we're using it for vertices, and we're using it to solve equations. And I think that's the major focus. So I want to do a couple of these. And this first one, and I may choose to do it on a whiteboard here. Zero equals x squared plus 6x minus 7. All right, so we want to solve this by completing the square. Well, the first thing we do Zoom. Is I'm going to write it so the x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides here. Then I've got x squared plus 6x plus something here equals 7. Now this is what's different on what I'm going to do here. I'm going to complete the square. But when I complete the square, when, since I'm on the other side, when I add that to this side, I'm going to add it to this side. Now the example we just did, the number stayed on the same side of the equation. So when I added it, I needed to subtract it to undo it on the same side. So, I'm going to take 6 over 2 and square that. And that is 3 squared, so I'm going to add 9 here and add 9 here. And when I do that, I have x plus 3, this number right here, squared equals 16. Now, I need to get rid of that square. Move that up a little bit. I need to get rid of the square. I'm just going to rewrite it for right now. Let me just kind of section this little bit of work off here. Um, x plus 3 squared. I'm going to take the square root equals plus or minus the square root of 16. The square root and the square are inverse operations. They cancel each other out. So x plus 3 is all that's left there, and the square root of 16 is 4. So it's equal to positive or negative 4. And then you solve two equations. x plus 3 equals 4, and you solve x plus 3 equals negative 4. And I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides here and get x is 1. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides here and get x equals negative 7. So those are my two solutions, 1, negative 7. If I plug that into this, I will get 0. I want to do one more example. And on our paper, I just did this one, um, I want to do number 5, and I'm going to use the board again. 0 equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Get it framed here decently. And I'm going to write this part first, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Just another quick check here. Did I copy it down correctly? Yes. No. 
this is minus and this is plus. Okay. All right. Now, this one's a little different. I'm still going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I've got 2x squared minus 3x equals negative 5. And then I'm going to do a, something a little different. I, to The technique we're using can only be x squared if we're going to complete the square. So I'm going to divide and put the 2 out here. The first term by 2, 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. Negative 3 have negative 3x divided by 2, that is negative 3 over 2x. And then I'm going to add something to complete the square, and then I'm going to get negative 5. But what I want you to really notice here is there's this 2 on the outside. So when I add something, put a number here, when I complete the square, it's 2 times that number. So I'm going to add... 2 times that number to keep the thing balanced. And this one's a little tricky. The B value is negative 3 over 2. And we are going to square that. Actually, you got to divide by 2 and then square it. Now, I said divide by 2. That's the same as taking half. So I'm going to take 1 half times negative 3 over 2 and then square that. That is the number I need to complete the square. Well, that is negative 3 fourths. And I square that and I get 9 sixteenths. Okay, again, I'm going to... That goes here and that goes here. All right, now the 2 is right here. This number right here is x minus 3 fourths here squared. x minus 3 fourths times x minus 3 fourths will give you this. And then we have the 2 on the outside there. And then I have negative 5 plus 2 times 9 sixteenths. I'm going to 2 and the 16, I'll kind of cancel, and that'll make 9 eighths. So that's negative 5 plus 9 eighths. That is what 2 times 9 sixteenths is. Now, numbers aren't our friend here right now, huh? Negative 5 plus 9 eighths. All right. That is negative 5 is negative 40 over 8. If I multiply 8 times 5, I get 40. Negative 40 over 8 plus 9 8, 9 eighths, is negative 31 eighths. So I'm going to leave it like that for right now. And now, I'm also going to get rid of this 2. I'm going to multiply by a half. Sometimes we'll divide by 2. Sometimes we'll multiply by 1 half. And I have x minus 3 fourths squared equals negative 31 over 16. And how much of that are you seeing and how much are you not seeing? Okay, let me hold that there for a second here. If you need to catch up. Realized I was off the screen there for a second. The negative 48. So I'm going to erase that. And I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. This is a, this is going to be a fun one here, guys. We are going to take the square root of this side and go plus or minus the square root of this side. And this side is x minus 3 fourths. And there, I'm going to get that i out of there. And that's i times the square root of 
31 over 16. Well, you got the 31, square root of 31 over the square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to write x my and I forgot the plus or minus right there, x minus 3 fourths equals plus or minus i square root of 31 over 4. All right, and then my final answer, trying to decide if I'll try to fit it in here. I need to add 3 fourths to both sides. And when I do that, I get x by itself here, and then I get 3 fourths, and I'm going to leave it just like this, plus or minus i square root of 31 over 4. Oops. Okay. A lot of work there on that one. I think that's one of the harder examples you'll see. But bring these in and we will do some more practicing tomorrow on that. Alright, I will see you then.